name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his grace and his blessing now and ever into the ages of all the ages, amen. Today is a great day which many people labored and prayed and struggled and which all of the things that you see and you hear has a very simple beginning. When David the prophet was in the fields with the sheep, one day came to him a thought that said, why don't I write the reflection of my thoughts and my prayers to God who created me and protected me and fed me? And after some time, he began to compose one of the most beautiful hymns and praises for the Lord that had not been done before. And even in the day after he defeated Goliath, <clears throat> the thought came to him, why not to write the praise that reflect the victory which God had given me? And in each time in his life, when God would work, whether it be with Saul, whether it be with the enemies, whether it be with his own people, or any in the time of his sin and repentance, that David would turn to prayer and, pr and praise. All came from a small thought, but ended up in something so powerful that even today when we come to pray, the church teaches us to use the words which God had guided him. And after some time, he had another thought, why not to have the house of God to be a built while I'm living in a palace and the Lord still in a tent. And this small thought grew in his life until he began to work and labor, and, and you know the rest of uh, the story. And after the temple was built also, he had another small thought that said, well, how come we don't use the prayers that, that were very important in my life and to compose them as hymns to be used to God in the temple? And it was so. If you look in the lives of many of the saints, that the great works which God did in them started with very small thought. The same thing happened in the life of His Holiness Pope Krullus of blessed memory, you see that small thoughts came to him and great works resulted after. One day he had a thought, why not for the church to also be outside of Egypt instead of only inside? Why not to send priests? Why not to establish churches? Why not to have schools? Many things that we take for granted today in our church began with one of the small thought in the heart and in the prayers of His Holiness. One day he said, why not for us to have the relics of St. Mark? Many people, if you think too deeply, they will say it's difficult, and the history, and the Vatican, and the relationships. But the small thought was, was perfected and completed in due time. The same thing, if you look uh, when he came to think about the cathedral and the establishment for St. Mark also to have a home and to be welcomed as proper and fitting in the city. And it was a great effort and work and labor for many people. But in the day, now we take for granted even after 50 years to see the glory of the work <coughs> increasing day by day. Even at the same time when you look the way that he lived, and Abuna will explain more from experience and from uh, witnessing. But in his life was very simple and very small. Most of the time he would live as if in a corner in one of this building. But the work and the praise and, and what came after for many years and generations we can't explain. Because when God puts his hand to use the simple things, to use the five loaves, that there is a miraculous 
work that goes from generation to generation. Even in the time I remember coming to visit here when the thought came to build this church. And many people would say a lot of things. Why in this place or how can it take place or what is the purpose? But it took its time, it took its purpose, and the evidence and the labor is clear before you. When God puts the thought in your heart, and he does for each of us to do different things at a different time for his glory, that we need to think very well, not overcomplicated, but to think well. Because sometimes the thought comes, and because of the other attacks, we stop pursuing the vision or the dream that God gave us because of the other thoughts. So not to overcomplicate the thought, but to think very well. It needs a, a simple mind, a clear mind, a spirit-filled mind. The second thing is that how to work hard and labor. When David was collecting all of the things for the temple, it took much time and effort and energy. And any time someone would come to attack, he has the response. Just like when Nehemiah was building the walls. Every time he has someone to attack him in a different way. But he, because he was thinking well and God was guiding him, every response he was able to give. When you're doing the work of the Lord, the problems will come, as he assured the disciples. They will attack you. They will say all things against you falsely for my sake. But when you rejoice in the work that you are doing for the kingdom of heaven, not for your own name, not for your own work, that God will be blessed and God will be magnified. As one of Shoy Kemen would say, when the problems come, then we know for sure this is the will of God. When the attacks that are superficial, then we know that this is the work of God. The third thing how to pray incessantly, even though we are working hard, but also it needs the prayer to sanctify the work. Some people, when they start working, they think that already, so God has blessed, so we forget to continue in prayer. But is that prayer which sanctifies the work. That's why in every liturgy, we'll say house is a prayer, house is a purity, house is a blessing. That to make this place a house of prayer, that is always sanctified and filled with the incense of God. <clears throat> in your blessed church, you have the three manifested and great fathers. The one lawyer who give his life, thinks very well and simply and speaks very softly, but powerfully with the grace of God. Another who was working for many years and not sleeping to bring forth the work of this blessed church. And a third that was praying incessantly, as you know, to give the model of the work. The small thought, but blessed and sanctified by holy men of God, working and laboring for the kingdom. If each one of us hears what God asks for us to do, and we put forward it in prayer, and we work hard, and we think simply, but with an enlightened mind, God will do great things, which they will speak and write and glorify God. But make sure that all of this for his glory, for his name, and for his kingdom. Because everything we do, we do for him, to him, and through him. May he be glorified and blessed now and ever into the ages of all ages. Amen.